Good morning and welcome back to Tactics Board. Today we're previewing Norwich City's trip to Plymouth Argyle in the Championship. Of course, they lost to Leicester City only two days ago or less than two days ago. And tomorrow they head to the South West to take on the team that's had a sort of mixed start to Championship life after promotion from League One last season, of course. There's been a lot of fanfare around Ipswich and the Sheffield Wednesday story is very interesting. But Plymouth, although they won the, the league title with more than 100 points, have sort of gone under the radar at the start of the season. But they haven't um, embarrassed themselves. They have got some decent results and they look like they've got a team that could definitely achieve their aim of staying in the Championship this season. So they'll provide Norwich with a difficult test. The Championship is so unpredictable, you can't really diagnose what sort of games these are going to be in terms of the difficulty but we are going to take a look at how I think tactically it'll unfold as well as David Wagner's um, starting lineup and what I think he'll choose. He's definitely got more decisions than he's had to face in the last few games of course he surprised I think most people by introducing Liam Gibbs in Adam Eder's place for that game against Leicester but now with Ashley Barnes injured of course we haven't yet had an update from from Wagner on what that looks like it means but uh, it looks very unlikely that he'll play at home park tomorrow. So um, there will need to be a rethink in that situation. We don't know whether Liam Gibbs will be involved in that mix again. But of course, Wagner does have two fit strikers in Yujo Huang and Adam Ida, who are both, I think, players who could fit into both of those roles. And diagnosing which player is going to, to fit best in, in both of those will probably um, be key to Wagner in that situation but yeah I'm going to uh, to give you my prediction on what I think he's going to go for I may well be wrong but let's get stuck into it so that's the team I think Wagner will choose Angus Gunn in goal Jack Stacey at right back Shane Duffy and Ben Gibson at centre back Demetrius Unulis at left back Kenny McLean and Gabriel Sarah in midfield with Christian Fastnacht on the right Jonathan Rowe on the left Yujo Huang and Adam Ida up front. I've gone tentatively with Huang behind Ida, but I think it could also end up being the other way around. Now in goal, I think Angus Gunn had a disappointing moment when he managed to to get a hand to Kalechi Iheanacho's penalty in that Leicester game. Of course, couldn't stop it going in and you could see that he was furious with himself afterwards. But tactically, he suits Norwich's approach very well. He's comfortable on the ball and, and passes it into Ben Gibson and Demetrius Unulis quite often, even under a lot of pressure. I do think he could improve his um, his play from a tactical point of view by going through the middle a bit more often. He does have options in that area with Gabriel Sara, Kenny McLean and Ashley Barnes, who obviously won't feature, but whoever's in his role, uh, they're all keen to take the ball from the goalkeeper. So I think he could improve by playing the ball through the middle more often rather than taking maybe the slightly easier way out by going wide into the centre-backs or a little bit further up into the full-backs. Um, because although that is the easier pass for the goalkeeper to execute and it doesn't put them under immediate pressure, it probably means it's harder for Norwich to advance the play and it also puts the wide players under a bit more pressure with obviously the touchline defending against them, if you like, as well as those that Plymouth press. So I'd like to see that from Gunn, but absolutely no doubt as to his starting ability. Um, George Long obviously has come in and this looking like he could be a reliable backup, but I think Gunn definitely has a, a safety net for a little while, for now at least. Jack Stacey is somebody who I think could probably also improve his performances and the way that he impressed during pre-season contributed to the decision the decision, sorry, to let Ballymumba go to this weekend's opponents, but I think he's maybe gone off the boil the last few games. Stoke was a little bit of a, a reprisal, if you like, of... Um, his early season form but in the Huddersfield game in the Rotherham game in that Leicester game I think he struggled especially on the ball when he had chances to shoot and cross and find teammates he often struggled to do that so I'd like to see him get back to his best I think he's maybe starting to show the inconsistency that that maybe meant Bournemouth were happy to allow him to leave the club but uh, he has shown himself capable in a Norwich City system before in this David Wagner system. So I'm sure he'll find that form soon enough. But I think with the number of players they're losing in forward areas and Ashley Barnes and Josh Sargent's um, absences certainly causing problems in that area, they could do with a bit of creativity from elsewhere. And the fullbacks are players who will be relied upon to, to contribute that. And I don't think Demetrius Unulis is having any issues 
uh, on that on that front. Although Norwich have struggled at times in recent performances, he's been excellent and technically he is just so so good. He controlled a ball with his chest in that Leicester game that I I just thought was unbelievable. It was absolute world class levels to be honest, and I never expected when I saw that pass travelling over to him that he would be able to control it and that's the sort of player that he is. I know people have issues with his physicality, his defensive ability but Wagner was fine with letting Mumba go when he saw that he didn't have that um, in pre-season. He obviously feels Yanoulis is somebody who can contribute at that side of the pitch, at that end of the pitch sorry and in that side of his game um, and I, I I can see why because I don't think that is much of a problem for Norwich if they're going to dominate games as much as they'd like to this season, his place definitely not under threat at the moment. And I think that's actually the case with Shane Duffy and Ben Gibson. There's almost this surprise every time with, with the impressive performances that Gibson puts in. But I thought he was really good against Leicester. Duffy was absolutely fantastic. And I thought he was very unlucky to end up on the losing team, to be honest, because it's so many perfectly timed tackles. He wins the ball well, even high up the pitch. Um, he puts strikers under pressure and he times things so well, gets his head to almost every ball. I think he probably should be a bit more of a threat from set pieces attack-wise than he is. Um, he probably should have a goal by now, and he should have had a goal in that Leicester game. People were talking about a fantastic save, but I think he probably should have, should have put it either side of the goalkeeper and should have a goal by now. But um, yeah, I think Ben Gibson's place is secure, as is Shane Duffy's, although they've now got, of course, a little bit more pressure from Danny Bart, so that's going to be an interesting one to follow, but right now I don't have any complaints, even though they conceded two goals against Leicester, not too much they could do in those situations, and I expect to see those two start, as I do with Kenny McLean and Gabriel Sarah. Sarah is somebody who I think under the radar has been quite disappointing um, the last few games, of course won the August Championship Player of the Month, but I think since then... He's really not been at his best and Norwich need him now. Now that they're going through a little bit of a tough period, you know, it's all well and good having the, the best players in the league when they've got five of them and realistically don't maybe need all of them to be on form. I think when they need somebody to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and take it to the opposition, Gabriel Sara can be that man, but he hasn't really been in the last few games. And um, I think Wagner will hope to see him return to his best at Plymouth, but still no doubt for me that he'll be in the starting eleven, as is the case with Kenny McLean. Everyone knows what a fan of his I am, and I think he's continued to produce this season. So I'd expect to see those two in midfield. John Rowe will be on the left, as David Wagner confirmed post-match. Of course, hooked in for Shemislav Fuheta a half-time after what he felt was a poor half. I didn't think he was especially poor, especially in comparison with some of his uh, teammates, but Wagner obviously did. However, he did say that happens to even the best players, and he's going to give him a chance at home park. So we'll see John Rowe on the left. I'm expecting to see Christian Fasnacht on the right, but that was certainly his poorest performance in yellow and green on Wednesday evening. I don't know what he was thinking when he bundled Steffi Mavadidi over for that Leicester penalty. He lost the ball too often and really didn't contribute much to Norwich on quite a poor right-hand side. So, um, yeah, I think he's going to do enough to retain his place. Maybe he's now slightly opened the door to Borja Sainz, who obviously played... 45 minutes for the club's under-21s on Tuesday, I believe. So he's going to be coming back into that fold before long. And I think Fasnak may have opened the door slightly to him there. But he'll be hoping to put another good performance in against Plymouth, get back to his best and maybe shut that door again. Up front, um, as I spoke about, I've gone with Huang and Ida because I think after the Leicester game, it was clear that they looked better with two up front. They have done throughout the season and their system dictates that. You can understand why why Wagner went with Gibbs. He's somebody who he feels can play in an advanced role. He's got those legs that maybe Ashley Barnes lacks a little bit when you're trying to counter and you're trying to stretch a team. And, and that is what they were trying to do against Leicester. Wagner also spoke about how the way that they were pressing lent itself to Gibbs a little bit, but I'm not sure he has the quality in the final third to do it really. I think you need somebody like Huang and Ida, who although they haven't been especially impressive in the last couple of outings, have shown that they know what it takes to be in that sort of area of the pitch. And I'm, I think Gibbs still sometimes looks a bit like an excited defensive midfielder when he gets into advanced areas. I know Wagner's spoken about his ability in that area, but I still think he's he's yet to prove he can really thrive in that environment. And for that reason, I expect to see Huang and Ida up front. I'm not sure which one of those is going to be in the better role. I've said before that I think Ida maybe suits that sort of number 10 even more than the number 9. And although he's a big physical athletic profile 
I think his technical ability is actually far better when he's got the play in front of him, uh, when he can pick out passes and have shots and link with players. He's actually, I think, underrated in that de department. But where I think he's slightly overrated, maybe within the club, is his ability as a number nine. He's good in around the box and he does put the ball into the net more often than not if you find him with good chances. But his hold-up play is poor at the moment. His touch isn't really good enough to to keep the ball in those tight areas where a number nine often operates. And I would like to see Huang in that role to allow Ida maybe to, to to get the best out of Ida really in that in that number 10 role. So I'm interested to see if Wagner sees it in the same way. Huang, to all intents and purposes, was brought in because Josh Sargent was injured. So maybe if they see him as that sort of replacement, then they do see him as a natural sort of number nine. But if they see both of those strikers in that role, somebody's going to have to adapt. And I'm interested to see who does that. I'm also interested to see Huang start, hopefully, because I think he's come on in two scenarios where it's slightly difficult for a striker to really show what they're about. Um, I think he was descri described to me earlier as a bit of a, a bull in a china shop when he came on. And you can understand that desire to make a, an impression. He hadn't played a minute of English football when he arrived at Norwich, having struggled to make an impact at Nottingham Forest. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do, hopefully. And I think Wagner will employ those two, although I'm not 100% sure um, as things stand. And I just wanted to quickly talk about Plymouth and what sort of test they'll bring tactically. They've obviously switched to a 4-3-3 after last season playing with wing-backs for the, the majority of the campaign. Um, Stephen Schumacher is a very astute and good and clever coach who has obviously come up and decided that Plymouth need to change slightly from how they were in League One if they're going to survive in the Championship, which is the goal. And I think they've spoken about the fact that they want to thrive there. They don't just want to survive, but they are still tempering those ambitions slightly with the way that they play. Bally Mumba, for example, who obviously is somebody Norwich fans are going to have an eye on, played majorly at wing-back um, last season, but has adapted his role to be part of the front three, and they've gone with slightly more solid fullbacks at the back. Obviously, more players in midfield as well that will clog things up. I think they may sit off Norwich a little bit. They're not known as an especially high pressing side, um, and that for me will suit Norwich a little bit. We spoke at the start of the season how they're going to be a better counter attacking side. That didn't really pan out against Leicester. They they struggled on the ball at times once they broke that initial press. Um, you know, same with Rotherham when when teams came on to them, and then ideally that's what they want, and then they play through it and they create chances. But they struggled against Rotherham as well, and I thought Stokes' system of sort of sitting off the same with Hull that actually played into Norwich's hands, and they looked very creative and very good playing through the lines. So although it's contrary to maybe the the tactical narrative around Norwich at the moment, I think if Plymouth sit off a little bit, which I think may be the, the case at the start of the game, that will play into Norwich's hands. I think they'll sit off a little bit, try and and navigate the first 15, 20 minutes and against a, a team that I think everyone in the Championship still feels is a big club and a team that it's probably good to get a point against if you're a promoted side. I think they will try and play slightly more defensively, which for me, especially given the absence of a Josh Sargent who thrives on that space in behind and that athleticism, um, I think that could play into Norwich's hands. One area where they'll have to be careful is out wide. We spoke about Mumba and a lot of their key players do operate in those areas. Um, of course, Morgan Whitaker signed from Swansea this summer as well, was a, a key player in their promotion and looks a really talented um, player. So they will have to be careful in those wide areas. Plymouth like to combine and like to attack down the flanks. And especially in Yanoulis' case, I spoke a little bit about maybe his defensive frailties and he'll have to be absolutely on it um, when Plymouth do attack. But I think Norwich have the ability to go and assert themselves on this game. And I think that's probably what they need after a game against Leicester, which they went into as severe underdogs, really. Um, and a game against Stoke, where they spent a good amount of time behind the ball. I think to get the fans back excited about how they're playing and to probably enjoy a game again, which they haven't done for a little while, that, that Plymouth approach where they may be slightly more defensive, I think um, would suit Norwich. So we'll see how that plays out. Thank you again for joining me on Tactics Board. Of course, we've got plenty of stuff across the Pink and Channels. 
Um, mine and Adam's preview show from yesterday is available now to catch up on on the YouTube channel. And if you head across to pinkon.com forward slash subscribe, you can access loads and loads of uh, subscriber exclusive content, loads of good stuff there. And of course, we'll be at Home Park covering every kick. So we'll see you there. Hopefully, for those of you making the journey, it isn't too much of a, of a bad one. I personally am not looking forward to it, to it too much, but hopefully Norwich can award their, reward their fans sorry, um, with an important three points. See you soon.